It looks like an electric vehicle graveyard, but it's actually not junk. Instead, they are countless electric bicycles, motorcycles, and cars seized by the Chinese traffic police. They are actually privately owned vehicles belonging to individuals and regularly used for transportation. Reports from a tow yard in Zhongshan, Guangdong, indicate that hundreds of confiscated vehicles are delivered there daily, adding to the already staggering numbers. Similarly, footage from an impound center for electric bikes in Guiyang show a shocking spectacle. The destination for these vast quantities of vehicles remains shrouded in mystery. Many speculate that the government is doing this to stimulate consumption. By confiscating citizens' old vehicles, they are forced to purchase new, upgraded, and more expensive ones. Dubbed as consumption upgrading in contemporary terms, this method of upgrading is not voluntary, but rather a form of public robbery. In June and July 2023, a sudden crackdown on electric bicycles swept across China from Shenzhen, Guangdong Province, rapidly expanding nationwide. Absurd scenes began unfolding. In cities, electric bike drivers played cat and mouse with traffic police, even leading to life-threatening high-speed chases. In rural areas, many woke up one morning to find their electric bicycles missing from their doorsteps. After searching everywhere, they were informed by police that their vehicles had been towed away for non-compliance. Further inquiries revealed that law enforcement agencies were systematically confiscating their allegedly non-compliant electric bicycles door to door. On the roads, cyclists were suddenly stopped, asked to present certificates of compliance and registration plates for their electric bicycles, and subjected to on-the-spot weighing. Failure to produce these documents or exceeding the prescribed weight led to immediate confiscation of the vehicles. Ultimately, electric bicycles and motorcycles that cost a few thousand yuan each ended up as mountains of scrap, as we saw in the opening video. And these are just the tip of the iceberg for one city in one region. In China, almost every city has a graveyard for electric bicycles. Netizens commented that in every city, each traffic police brigade has a huge parking lot, which is always full and constantly expanding. Whether it's the mountains of piled-up vehicles or the cat and mouse game, Chinese netizens assert that this is undoubtedly an uncontested wonder of the world, a scene unlikely to be found in any other country. Electric bicycles are a pillar industry vigorously promoted by the Chinese Communist Party as a new energy source. However, bizarrely, while production, sales, and purchase are permissible, it's almost impossible to drive them. Traffic police arbitrarily set up checkpoints on the roads and then seize electric bikes for various reasons, such as exceeding weight limits, length limits, speed limits, environmental pollution, causing traffic congestion, and so on. After fines are paid, theoretically, confiscated vehicles should be released. But these fines often amount to two or three thousand yuan, which, when you include parking fees, adds up to the loss of two bikes. Helplessly, many can only give up. Moreover, more vehicles are simply declared non-compliant and confiscated outright. Electric bicycles are the private property of ordinary citizens. So, do enforcers have the right to confiscate them at will? Sorry, but the term "private property" has never existed in the CCP's dictionary. When law enforcement officers who forcefully confiscate electric bicycles are questioned by the public, their response is often, "It's all for the country." Several years ago, citing environmental and safety reasons, the CCP government banned motorcycles and only allowed electric bicycles on the roads. This led to a rapid expansion of the electric bicycle industry nationwide, making electric bicycles the most common and widely used means of transportation in both urban and rural China. According to data from the China Center for Industrial Studies, by the end of 2023, the stock of electric two-wheelers in China had reached 400 million units, with an annual production volume reaching a staggering 73.3 million units by the end of 2022. Why suddenly crack down on electric bicycles just like they did on motorcycles years ago? The unanimous response from netizens is astonishing. If all these new vehicles are produced every year and the old ones are not confiscated, who will buy the new ones? This is the fastest way to drive economic growth. If houses and cars aren't selling, how will GDP increase? How will consumption rise? How will domestic demand be stimulated? It's becoming an infinite loop. One netizen said, "Previously, I didn't understand what macro control was. Now I finally understand." 
The confiscation of electric bicycles seems like a rehearsal for the upcoming exchange of old cars and home appliances for new ones this year. Many netizens lament, I feel like my car, which I've been driving for years, won't pass inspection this year. I feel like my phone might become unusable this year. Some netizens bluntly state, hold on to your wallets tight. The crazier the enemy gets, the tighter you need to hold on to your wallets. During a news conference on March 6, Zheng Shanjie, director of China's National Development and Reform Commission, emphasized the significance of promoting large-scale equipment upgrades. He also highlighted the importance of encouraging the exchange of old consumer goods for new ones as a major initiative from the party's central committee and the state council, aimed at prioritizing high-quality development. This move not only boosts consumption, but also enhances advanced production capacity, improves production efficiency, and promotes energy conservation and carbon reduction while reducing safety hazards. For example, last year, investments in industry and agriculture in China amounted to approximately 4.9 trillion yuan. The demand for equipment upgrades is expected to continuously expand, preliminarily expected to have an annual scale exceeding 5 trillion yuan. While the market appears lucrative, some people and businesses are preparing to capitalize on this trend. However, for small and medium-sized enterprises, especially private businesses, unless the government provides substantial subsidies to level the playing field between state-owned and private enterprises, it will be difficult for them to survive, let alone update their equipment. Ordinary citizens are not concerned about whether businesses update their equipment. They are more worried about whether their cars and home appliances will suffer the same fate as electric bicycles. Minister of Commerce Wang Wentao announced plans to promote upgrading old cars and home appliances this year, emphasizing its significance in stimulating consumption. China's automotive and home appliance markets have transitioned from a period of pure growth to one where both growth and inventory coexist. In 2023, Chinese people owned 340 million cars, and the number of major home appliances, such as refrigerators, washing machines, and air conditioners, exceeded 3 billion units, indicating significant demand and potential for upgrading. How do netizens view this massive 5 trillion yuan opportunity? This blogger said, One way to see trade-ins is that excess production capacity is already very serious. The last large-scale trade-in was in 2009. What happened at that time is so vivid in my memory. The Wall Street financial tsunami dashed the European and American economies to pieces, causing a sharp drop in foreign trade demand. The home appliance industry, a pillar of domestic industry at the time, followed a sharp decline in orders, wasting production capacity and accumulating inventory. So the government launched a large-scale trade-in of old home appliances. In 2024, besides home appliances, industrial and electromechanical equipment will also play a significant role. Therefore, alongside consumer goods, there will be a substantial trade-in of equipment this time. The bottom line is the same digesting inventory, allowing production capacity to operate normally and ensuring employment. However, 2024 is not the same as 2009. In 2009, it was a market problem, but in 2024, it is not entirely a market problem. Market problems are easy to solve. This blogger hesitated to articulate further, but netizens filled in the blanks for him. Where does the money come from? Massive upgrades require money from the people. Do you need money for the exchange? Is it free? If you don't have money, what do you exchange? Is it like gas cylinders and electric bicycles, mandatory replacement every two years, otherwise they get seized? Mandatory household surveys, compulsory confiscation of products that have exceeded their warranty, and forced opening of loans to make up the difference for new ones. The cycle of electric bicycles is basically complete. We, the ordinary people, have already paid one or two thousand yuan. Now something else has started. In 2023, China did not witness the so-called economic recovery after the pandemic. Instead, a wave of closures and unemployment swept across the entire country. Houses weren't selling, and neither were cars. Despite employing various methods to boost domestic demand and stimulate consumption, the CCP government failed to make even a ripple. This blogger said, In 2024 and beyond, 95% of the houses will remain unsold. The reason is simple. More than 90% of the houses lose their liquidity. 2024 is the first year when business loans expire 
and a lot of people are bound to liquidate their positions. What is a business loan? It is to take out a loan in the name of a business. Many people used to replace business loans with house loans, but now the value of the house has shrunk, which is equivalent to having to make up money to the bank, which can be several millions at a time. Can it be made up? Therefore, the property market will be dead in 2024. Just look at the transaction volume. The second half of this year is an important time for price changes of many major asset classes, and many people's confidence will be shattered. In the first two months of 2024, the real estate market in China has not only failed to usher in the much-anticipated recovery, but has, in fact, grown even more bleak. China's top 100 real estate developers experienced a staggering 52% drop in sales volume in January and February of this year, with February marking a new low for monthly sales performance in recent years. In February alone, the sales revenue of the top 100 developers amounted to 194.7 billion yuan, a nearly 65% year-on-year decrease and a nearly 29% decrease from the previous month. Even China's largest real estate developer, Poly Development, saw a decrease of over 40% in contracted sales in the first two months of the year, with pressures mounting on central state-owned enterprises, local state-owned enterprises, and private enterprises alike. Data from CRIC shows that the sales revenue of the top 100 real estate developers plummeted by 50% in the first two months of this year. According to China Index Academy, the total sales of the top 100 real estate developers in January and February amounted to approximately 476.2 billion yuan, down nearly 52% year-on-year. Among them, there were 14 developers with sales exceeding 10 billion yuan, a decrease of 12 to the same period last year, compared to the same period last year, and 8 developers with sales exceeding 5 billion yuan, a decrease of 18 compared to the same period last year. According to statistics from Huatai Securities, among the top 50 real estate developers, 38 experienced a year-on-year decrease of over 50% in sales in a single month, with only one developer, Sunak China Holdings Limited, achieving year-on-year growth, a decrease of 6 compared to January. Houses are completely unsellable, and investors are unable to realize profits. Meanwhile, housing prices continue to decline. Some have even compiled a 2024 housing price crash ranking. This blogger said, As the number of unemployed people increases in 2024, people's income will gradually decrease, and the list was just published of housing prices that have fallen the most. In Yongqing, Hubei, it was 23,000 yuan per square meter at purchase, and now the house price is 3,500 yuan per square meter. In Yanjiao, Beijing, the maximum price at purchase was 45,000, but now it is 6,000. In Weihai, Rushan, the price was 8,000 at purchase, and now it's 2,000. In small counties in Heidongjiang, the current price is 500 yuan per square meter. Peacock City in Bada Ling cost 18,000 at purchase, and now it costs 4,000. At Nanjing Tsuiping City, it was 17,500, and now it's 6,400. A real estate agent in Nanchang said, The number of foreclosed houses in China in 2024 has increased by more than 500,000 in less than three months so far. This data is already very conservative and accounts for 6% in Nanchang. Many property owners in Nanchang are giving away houses for free, and there are too many such cases. If I wasn't in this industry, I wouldn't believe it. Many owners do not require you to pay a down payment, and even taxes can be borne by the owner himself. As long as someone is willing to bear his mortgage, the owner can transfer the property to you for free. There are two reasons for this situation and the increase in foreclosed houses. One is that they bought it at a high price. Now that house prices have dropped, the down payment has long been lost and investors have simply cut off the mortgage payment and no longer want the house. The second is layoffs or reduced salaries. Some experts say that houses aren't selling because the prices are not high enough. They argue the higher the price rises, the greater the willingness to buy a house. Financial expert Xu Jiaoping said, Many experts fail to communicate in plain language. Just because no one is buying houses, does that mean I suddenly have the money to buy one? If I have the money, why wouldn't I buy one? The fact that no one is buying doesn't mean I suddenly have the funds, does it? You want me to buy a house in the city, but does buying a house come for free? 
Are you giving away houses or selling them? If I want to buy a house, where's the money coming from? If you give me the money, I'll buy one too. But if you don't, and I don't have any money myself, what am I supposed to buy it with? Premier Li Chang stated that we have 600 million people with a monthly income below 1,000 yuan. They still need to buy houses, but how long do they need to save for that? Once I said, our average salary is between 6,000 to 8,000 yuan. Many of my online friends said, we don't earn that much. Who's averaging us out? Someone said, I only make 3,000. Others said, I only make 2,500. So how poor are Chinese people? This blogger said, do you think a monthly income of less than 5,000 is considered low? What I'm about to share with you may blow your mind. Authoritative data shows that there are 5.46 million people nationwide with no income at all. 215 million people with a monthly income of less than 500 yuan. 202 million people with a monthly income of 500 to 800 yuan. And 124 million people with a monthly income of 800 to 1,000 yuan. Adding up the above numbers, there are 550 million people in the country with a monthly income of less than 1,000 yuan. There are 243 million people living with 1,000 to 1,500 yuan, 172 million people living with 1,500 to 2,000 yuan, 203 million people living with 2,000 to 3,000 yuan, 156 million people living with 3,000 to 5,000 yuan. So that makes 1.3 billion people with a monthly income of less than 5,000 yuan. That accounts for almost 95% of everyone in China. What does this mean? Do we still need to discuss consumption upgrades or downgrades? The reason why consumers buy cheap things is because they have no money. How can they pursue high consumption? It's clear that real estate isn't among the choices the CCP government is considering for boosting consumption this year. While it might appear that the focus is shifting from real estate to the broader economy, it actually reflects the government's inability to avert the real estate sector's collapse. In 2024, it's not just real estate that's collapsing, but also the auto industry. A female entrepreneur selling electric cars remarks, Even new energy electric cars in Shanghai aren't selling. There are over 200 cars piled up, and not a single one has sold since the beginning of the year. Who wants a Volvo or a Tesla? No one wants a Tesla with thousands of kilometers or a BYD Han with 10,000 kilometers on it. Does anyone want to exchange one? Since the beginning of this year, sales of new energy vehicles in China have seen continuous price declines, and car companies are suffering. On March 5th, shortly after the opening of the Hong Kong stock market, the stock price of Ideal Auto plummeted significantly, dropping by over 13% at one point. By the close of trading, Ideal Auto's stock price was 152 Hong Kong dollars, a nearly 12% decrease. According to Sohu Finance, on that day alone, Ideal Auto's market value on the Hong Kong stock market evaporated by 36 billion yuan. In the U.S. stock market, as of the time of writing, Ideal stock price fell by 11.25%, reducing its market value by approximately 34 billion yuan. Market rumors suggest that Ideal Auto's significant stock price plunge may be related to disappointing sales of the Ideal Mega. On March 5th, Chinese new energy car company NIO also released its unaudited financial results for the fourth quarter and full year of 2023. The financial report shows that NIO's net loss in the fourth quarter of 2023 was approximately 5.4 billion yuan, a year-on-year -year decrease of over 7%. The net loss in 2023 exceeded 20.7 billion yuan, a year-on-year -year increase of nearly 44%. The net loss before adjustments was nearly 18.4 billion yuan, a year-on-year -year increase of approximately 51%. Over the past six years, NIO's cumulative losses have exceeded 86 billion yuan. Meanwhile, NIO's liabilities are also on the rise. As of December 31, 2023, NIO's cash and cash equivalents, restricted cash, short-term investments, and long-term deposits amounted to 57.3 billion yuan, while its current liabilities were nearly 57.8 billion yuan, an increase of approximately 12 billion yuan from 2022. The total liabilities amounted to nearly 88.8 billion yuan, an increase of approximately 19.2 billion yuan from 2022. In China's highly competitive auto market, resorting to price wars seems to be the only solution. Brands like BYD, SAIC GM Wuling, 
Geely, NIO, Chang'an Blue, Sherry, R Brand, IM Motors, Volkswagen, Hyundai, and Xpeng have all slashed prices since March. However, William Lee, chairman and CEO of NIO, stated at a report meeting that the NIO brand places greater emphasis on gross profit margins and will not engage in price wars to increase sales volume. For a long time, NIO's sales have remained at around 10,000 vehicles per month, earning it the nickname NIO 10,000 in the Chinese automotive industry. Sales volumes remains the biggest bottleneck for NIO. Without participating in price wars, maintaining sales volume may be even more challenging. Chinese citizens are not optimistic about the CCP's push to exchange old cars and appliances for new ones. This blogger says, can the exchange of old items for new ones stimulate consumption? I don't think it will have much effect. The root cause of the current economic plight is the increasing number of unemployed and indebted individuals, leading to widespread poverty among the people. Since countless people are short of money, where do they have the money to exchange old items for new ones? Therefore, this wave of policies aimed at stimulating the economy and boosting consumption is destined to fail to achieve the desired results for the CCP.